Boats on Lake Tahoe are as varied as the stones on its beaches. Let's take a cruise on one of the sportier models. So we're out here on Lake Tahoe floating in front of the Homewood High and Dry Marina, which is right next door to the West Shore Cafe, which is across the street from Homewood Mountain Resort. You know, when, when customers arrive at the marina and they show up, um, a lot of times I see them kind of deprogramming from their life in the city. You know, they maybe drove three hours to get here. As soon as they turn that corner and they see the lake, you know, you see their face light up um, and they start to instantly relax and they settle into, you know, vacation mode, so to speak. Um, they get out on the water and even when they come back, they're even more relaxed. It's like they're a completely different person, you know. Um, they've stopped thinking about their job or whatever got them there and they're just enjoying the beautiful scenery that's around the lake and, and um, yeah, just having a great time. Yeah, so a boat like this, depending on the features you get, is going to range between 160000 to 180000 This boat in particular is uh, it's the G25 series from, the, from Nautique. Um, this thing has all the bells and whistles you can imagine. I mean, everything from a, a GoPro mount on the, on the rope mount to a really sophisticated sound system, a digital display, um, you can fit 19 people on this, and, and this boat in particular is made to make a big wake, which is for wake surfing, which is one of the most popular sports happening right now on the lake. What better way to drive to lunch? We're heading to the West Shore Cafe. We're going to meet Chef Ben, find out what he's putting on the table, and maybe have a glass of wine. The West Shore Cafe and Inn has quickly become a dining mecca. Chef Ben Dyken is the man behind the menu. What it means for me to be a chef here in North Lake Tahoe is just the scenery. It's beautiful. It's part of nature. And as being part of a chef, we're, we're trying to, are moving forward with being more local and being more in touch with our surroundings and nature. And here in Tahoe, there's so much going on. It, it, it's amazing, the produce and everything going on. There's just a big food scene about to blow up here in Tahoe. So being up here right now on the cusp of the, ex the explosion of the culinary scene is quite amazing. So one of the, the best parts about West Shore Cafe is we are kind of on an island of our own because one of the things is, is you come up to our restaurant and you enjoy our food, but we have so many great things. We have the marina right next to us. Uh, we, we're right on the pier. Uh, Homewood, you can go and hike up there. There's so much more to do here besides just eat, which I really want you to do. That's my, that's my prerogative, but there's so many more activities. You can go on the beach, you can go for a hike, you can take your bike, you can enjoy it. We're not so crammed in with so many other things. We, we are our own oasis ourselves in the middle of all this beauty. Chefs are artists. We don't like to admit it because we think of artists as painters, but chefs, we paint the plate. Uh, and then when you eat with your eyes, you see it visually. So uh, this background at West Shore Cafe is amazing, and the menu lets us be creative with bright, vibrant colors. It's, it's summer. The produce is great. We're getting fresh fish. We're getting the top-notch beef right now. So it's just amazing. The best paints we get to use right now. So as a chef, when you say you've learned everything, you're dead inside. So if you're not learning something new every day, then you're not living life. As a chef, I am constantly learning something new. Right now, my big kick is Scandinavian, Norwegian food. I'm playing with the ideas of smoke and fire and salt. Last year, it was all about molecular for me. And maybe next year, it might be Asian fusion. But I constantly, I get bored unless I find something new to explore about food. And there's so much about food that when you say, I've learned everything, it's a flat out lie. Nobody, there's so much, that I will never learn everything about food. Chef Ben has a unique take on a ribeye so big, it would make Fred Flintstone flinch. All right, so back here in the West Shore kitchen right now, we're gonna work on one of our new signature dish, the two pound bone-in ribeye. What we're gonna do, so we're gonna just season it up with a little bit of salt. That's it, you wanna get all that good stuff right there. So what we have here is a hot cast iron skillet. That is the best way to cook a big piece of meat. You hear that sizzle? That's when it's good right there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a nice sear on both sides and then we're gonna put it in the oven for about seven minutes. Be a nice mid-rare. Also with this dish, we just got these in. 
fresh scallops in the shell. As you can see, I already shucked one, but these bad boys are still alive. Just came in. One of our goals at West Shore Cafe is to get the freshest seafood possible. We can't really do fresh beef because there's not enough room for the cows in the backyard. All right, so you want to get a nice char on there. See all that nice caramelization right there? That's all the natural sugars. And I'm gonna throw this bad boy in the oven. 450 degree oven, seven minutes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get everything else ready for the dish. So this is a little herb tomato butter that we make in house. A little bit of olive oil. And then we have fresh, these are called lobster mushrooms. They are not really lobsters, but they're mushrooms that look like a lobster. Oyster mushrooms, whole, beautiful, fresh. The key behind a mushroom is to have plenty of fat to saute it in, because a mushroom just wants to suck it all up. A little bit of oil. Fingerling potatoes. They've already been sliced in half and slightly roasted, otherwise you'll spend all day doing this. Potatoes nice and warm, get a nice caramel color to that. That's gonna go into the oven as well. All right, so next up, is the fresh scallop, slightly seasoned, pan is hot. Now the beautiful thing about these fresh scallops is you could actually eat it raw, like a sashimi. That's how fresh this scallop is. If you ever watch the TV shows, there's always a certain chef who's always angry about scallops because you can easily overcook a scallop. The best thing to do with a scallop is just sear it on one side, flip it over, and then you're done. What I'm gonna do is just let, I'm gonna pull it from the heat, hit it with some of our shallots, tomato butter, and then just let it sit to the side. So for our, our last bit of piece de, piece de resistance, as they would say in France, it's just some broccolini, because you need a little bit of vegetables to go with your life. Tomato butter, garlic, shallots. So the broccolini we already grilled off a little bit so you can see it's charred. I kind of like that charred flavor just because of the nature of you get that 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 sinew and that flavor behind it. It's really I like I just like grilled things. So it goes into the pan. So it's already part it's already part cooked, so all we're really doing is just glazing it with garlic and butter and shallots. Alright, so after being in the oven for about 10 minutes at 450. It's gonna be hot. So we're looking at a nice mid-rare, if not rare steak right now. The, lot, the bigger the meat, you're gonna to wanna to leave it longer in your oven. All we're gonna do is just add a little bit of butter on top. Just give it a nice little glaze. The goal is to let your meat rest. So we're gonna give it just a second. Salt. So you're gonna pull out your steak. This giant steak needs a giant plate, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna assemble our plate. That's the best part right there. Everything else is just money, all right? So, fingerling potatoes, broccolini. Now the mushroom has a very earthy, umami flavor, so try to get it on there with the steak. And then last but not least, Kind of like a play on surf and turf right here. We're gonna take our scallop, fried parsnips. It's like a sweet carrot. Sometimes just a little bit of green goes a long way. All done salt, the best salt in the world. It's fried capers. So hopefully that's uh, filling right there. If not, then I failed at my job. There you have it, the bone-in ribeye, fresh scallop, broccolini, the West Shore Cafe.
Well, that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you ate well. We'll see you next time right here on The Chef and the City. Special thanks to our title sponsor, North Lake Tahoe. Plan your Lake Tahoe vacation at GoTahoeNorth.com. Email questions or comments to madmulliganproductions at gmail.com.